This is a story about change and how the small island developing state of St. Lucia will navigate the ever-growing threat of climate change. This is a story about planning and response. What can we do? What have we done? And why climate change adaptation is an urgent matter of consideration and action. Join us as we dive into St. Lucia's climate resilience journey. In just about four hours, Tropical Storm Debbie dumped 10 inches of rain on St. Lucia, triggering landslides and flooding never experienced before. This three-foot entrance was once the front door of Bacadal family's residence, now just another victim of Thomas. It all started on Saturday, October 30th, 2010, from about 9 a.m. Many homes were destroyed, lives were lost, including a mother and her two sons, when their home was buried under an avalanche of mud and water. I've invested in so far as most persons know, it's no, no secret. But what's more important is the ability for our people in the time of adversary to come together and to rise to the occasion. With excessive greenhouse gas emissions blanketing the earth and trapping the sun's heat, over a long period of time, these excess emissions cause an imbalance in the earth's climatic system, bringing hotter days and prolonged periods of drought, among other impacts. A trip to St. Lucia's largest water reservoir revealed the startling effects of climate change. And welcome to the, to the Sir John Compton Dam. This is the area that is in the entire north of the island, most likely about 90% of the island being fed from this water source, from this, from this dam. So we are thankful that you could visit the dam because right now we are facing a crisis. Um, it has not reached to proportion yet, but we are, right now we are 317.6 feet, right? And this, if we continue in this format, then we will be losing about six inches of water per day. So, in essence, we are not meeting our full capacity when it comes to production. In order for us to sustain the populace that we are feeding, we need about 8.5 to 10 million gallons of water. Right? And right now we are feeding just about 60% of that coming out of this, this lake. We can't help turn the tides against our rapidly changing climate and its dreadful effects by preparing for and responding to its impacts. As a nation and as a people, we hold immense power and responsibility to safeguard our homes, livelihoods and heritage against the expected effects of climate change we must embrace adaptation to build our climate resilience. Climate resilience is the ability to anticipate, prepare for, and respond to hazardous events, trends, or disturbances related to climate. Improving climate resilience involves assessing how climate change will create new or alter current climate-related risk and taking steps to better cope with these risks. So, what is St. Lucia doing to build climate resilience? St. Lucia is uh, taking every effort to build its climate resilience and it's doing so in a number of ways. It's looking at the policy uh, environment, it's looking at legislation uh, in terms of awareness raising, capacity building as well, but also looking at actions that can be taken on the ground, very tangible actions that can be taken to help um, if, if addressing climate change. The NAP is the National Adaptation Plan, and that is a strategy that allows uh, one to see, or a country to see, what it can do to help build its climate resilience, what it can do to help it better cope with climate change. And St. Lucia's NAP, that contains actions, is a 10-year document, a 10-year NAP, that goes from 2018 to 2028. The goal of the NAP is to strengthen St. Lucia's resilience to climate change and to support the implementation of the country's climate change adaptation policy. The NAP highlights eight priority sectors for adaptation action, 
further elaborated in its associated Sectoral Adaptation Strategies and Action Plans, or SASAPs. Under the National Adaptation Plan, that, that is the umbrella document for adaptation, we have what we call Sectoral Adaptation Strategies and Action Plans, or SASAPs. Those are able to go into more detail as to what St. Lucia wants to do to help it build climate resilience, to help it cope better with the adverse impacts of climate change. And it does that uh, across a number of sectors, sectors such as water, agriculture, fisheries, resilient ecosystems, infrastructure and spatial planning, health, education, as well as tourism. So those are the eight sectors found in St. Lucia's umbrella nap through its SAS apps. And those SAS apps are allowing us to be able to take action in the short term, the medium term, and the long term. Let's zone into a few sectors and let's see what they're doing to build climate resilience. Coral gardeners in St. Lucia are working together to save reefs from the devastating effects of climate change through a flagship project consistent with the island's National Adaptation Plan. My name is Shinella James and I'm a coral gardener. I've been a coral gardener for the past seven years of my life. My job as a coral gardener is to enhance the, the reef, bring them back to life, because most of our reef, our coral reef, has died out because of human activities. It is important because my family is a, mostly a fishing village. Where we live is a fishing village and we depend mostly on fishes. So in order to help them out, we as coral gardeners are building the reef back to increase the fishing population right here in Sufre. Well, what we've done is actually with our coral restoration program, which is amazing, because what we've done with it is that we've actually taken some of those coral, especially our elkhorns and stagons, because they are the fastest growing ones that we have in our Caribbean region. And we've actually created uh, what we call nurseries, quote unquote, that we've actually put them in a sheltered area that allows them to grow um, at a faster rate than they would in their natural habitat because they're closer to the surface at about 15 to 20 feet of water and they're able to grow faster and after that within a year especially the staghorns they're able to grow from 10 centimeters to about a foot square so we're able to take that off and bring it back out into their natural habitat transplant them or we call them outplant outplant them back into the reef therefore by doing that at a faster rate uh, you have the coral growing and you have them surviving so that they create habitats for our small fish as well as hopefully as they keep growing that they would create a better protection for our coastal areas where erosion um, seaside erosion is concerned um, i've changed my production method um, i have an aquaponic system Basically, aquaponics use 90% less water than traditional agriculture, where we recirculate the water and the, we have fish in there. The fish basically provide nutrients for the plants and the plants filter the water for the fish. Um, on top of that, I've built an 80,000 tanks rainwater harvesting. Um, so I harvest water, water from all my greenhouses with that. I also um, tap into a government um, supply irrigation system, tap um, getting water from the river. So that is like 1.2 kilometers away. And I pump the water into my tank in the dry season. Climate adaptation is the steps that you actually take to deal with the expected changes and variability in the climate, right? So for us, it is simple. We, as a man say, if you're feeling hot, plant a tree. If you are, if you, if you want shade, plant a tree. If you want fruit, plant a tree. And for forest, forestry, what we're saying is, this is very true, that we can actually adapt to the expected changes through the planting of trees, through better management of the existing um, um, floral, the ex existing vegetation, through the protection and management of our, of our biodiversity, right? We can build resilience. Without data, 
we cannot do anything. So the manual stations is being done every day of the month of the year, whether it be Christmas, whether it be Easter, whether it be raining, storm, whatever. Somebody have to come out. This station now, right, right, is one of our climate change projects underneath the we have um, optimization of the hydrological network, right? That was a World Bank project. Now, with the project you do now on the NAP, this is one of the ways, right? We could get data, right? To affect the adaptation processes, methods, towards climate change. This school is the only school on island so far, is the model, that could just run on autopilot. You don't have to be wondering, oh, where are we going to get water to clean the school, the children? No. So here, it is one of our key adaptations combating drought, climate change, collecting rainwater, right? As an alternative source of our water. Despite the significant strides made in developing SASAPs and seeing the implementation of projects in the works, many barriers remain that limit St. Lucia's ability to implement prioritized measures needed to actively strengthen the country's climate change resilience to safeguard lives, livelihoods, and our heritage. This is where the support from multilateral funds like the Adaptation Fund and Green Climate Fund, together with bilateral and other sources, come in to bolster countries' ability to adapt by remedying issues and seeking to address barriers that stand between non-action and implementation. Out of the eight sectors identified in the NAP, five have SASAPs, and three more remain to be developed under the current GCF Readiness Project, focused on enhancing St. Lucia's national adaptation planning process. Well, this readiness project is, is, you know, aims to achieve quite a number of things, but it's building on the work that we've done so far. Um, one key aspect of this is to be able to inform on things like the coastal vulnerability of St. Lucia as it relates to climate change. You know, what, what is the likely impact from sea level rise? What is the likely impact from um, hurricanes in this region and how that could potentially impact on um, the vulnerability of St. Lucia as a small island developing state? Beyond that, you know, developing the capacity of um, both technocrats and other high-level officials in terms of their understanding, as well as to improve the learnings on national adaptation planning in St. Lucia, so that you know, all aspects of society are informed. But in terms of from the higher up, you know, there's a clear understanding and direction for the, the process and the work that's being done in country to support the national adaptation planning process. The GCF Readiness Project intends to build St. Lucia's climate resilience through enhancing St. Lucia's NAP process by developing sectoral adaptation plans, which will be based on a strong climate rationale and through active stakeholder engagement. This will ensure that we can have strong implementation of our adaptation actions and be able to access climate finance once we've prioritized our project ideas and scope. We all have a significant role to play in this story and joining the fight to bolster St. Lucia's climate change adaptation efforts in any way augurs well for all of us. From contributing to policy, regulatory or institutional change, to securing funding to upgrade essential technology or infrastructure, raising awareness, building capacity, undertaking critical research for informed decision-making, to the actions we take at home, what we do today can significantly impact and shape the future. No, absolutely. Without adaptation, you can you can grow no crops. You can grow nothing. So you need to adapt so that you can continue production. Without, um, there is no agriculture, no food, no business. We must adapt, and the time is now. And each of us has a role to play. From our homes, our conservation habits, our waste management habits, it's important that we start at home, and it's also important that we start in our businesses and our communities. We can, we can all play a part, right? No matter how young we are, how old we are, we all have, we can all contribute towards that. And we can contribute by 
planting trees. Every walk of life, every level, everyone has a part to play in, in building this climate resilience, in contributing to the solution. Because at the end of the day, if you are not part of the solution, then you're part of the problem. Um, adaptation, I think, it's a continuity from where we're starting now, continue going. I don't think we'll ever stop adaptation. We just have to improve it as we go along. To move a nation, it takes one person, one household, one enterprise, one community, and one sector at a time. Building climate resilience, adaptation is everyone's business.